Yes, fairly clean workbench. Not often you see that here. <laughs> really clean. Yeah, we've been on a cleaning spurt over the weekend. Anyway, we have a uh, guy that follows us on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, he participates a lot in our videos and likes to comment and ask questions. So he's got a real nice Massey Ferguson subcompact tractors, and he's trying to uh, modify it a little bit with regards to the lighting. I think I might have had a bit of an influence on that. Pretty sure I have. Yeah, so sure. anyway, seeing I got them dragged into this web of modifications and modding everything out, uh, we got talking back and forth and I said to him, I said, you know, make sure now when you do all these, these lighting mods that you, you solder and you heat shrink your, your wiring and your joins. Uh, I'm not a fan of butt connectors. Uh, butt connectors are okay if you have no other means, but there's a better way. And the better way, of course, is solder and heat shrink your, your joins. So Donnie, this video basically is for you. I kind of take it for granted that people know the basics and not everybody do know the basics because not everybody is around the basics. It's okay for Kathy and I to say that, uh, you know, we know about soldering because we're doing it pretty well every day. But there's a lot of people who has never been introduced to it. We actually had to show our own son one time how to solder. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's just the way it is. So that's what this video is going to be about. So. Uh, basically, we're going to start off with some basic tools because this is going to be a basic video. The very, very basics of basic, 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 basic. Right? Keyword here is basic. Exactly. So the first thing you're going to need is solder. Now, there's a couple of different types of solder that people tend to get mixed up in. There's acid core. Acid core will be written on it. Acid core. That's like used for plumbing, for copper piping, and whatnot. This is rosin core. Rosin core is for electrical wiring. You didn't know that, did you? No, I learned no. something too. Yeah, well, there you go. So rosin core, it's written right on it. Right there. There. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did the zooming. You did. Good for you. Yeah, so this here uh, requires no flux. There's flux inside the core in there. Okay, cool. I did it again. Yeah. So, and it's lead free. That being said, I always advise people to use it in a well ventilated area. Personally, I don't always do that, but do as I say, not as I do. That's right. Okay. Now, so we got the solder down hand pack. The next thing will be a soldering iron or a soldering gun. Personally, I like the Weller guns. This here is a Weller gun. Now, why do I like a Weller gun? Because the glass don't stay in. No. <laughs> I like a Weller gun because I've been using them for years. And some people don't know about these guns, but these guns actually got two ranges on them. It's got a double switch on it. And uh, when you hit the switch, the first part, you'll hear a click. Hear that click? Yeah. That's high. When you hit it again, that's low. So there's actually two different ranges. Now, what I don't like about these is occasionally you find the tips take a long time to heat up. If you get into a situation like that, you need to tighten up these little set screws because they're loose and you're not getting the power out through the, the copper. So I like to use that particular gun because it's very fast for heating up. If you're doing a lot of soldering, even a heat, uh, e even a, a soldering iron, one that you leave plugged in that's on all the time, that's fine too. But this is my first choice on these. So we have that down hand pat. Now, you need wire strippers. You can have this type, you can have this type, you can have this type. Depending on where you need to strip the wires, Whatever works for you, works for you. I mean, a fella can easily get by on a $7 pair of these, no problem at all. The difference being, is if I want to strip the wire like that, I pull and it comes off. If I want to use these type, I go like that again, and I pull it off. Or, if you really want to impress a woman, 
you use this type. And you can, I got to admit, I'm impressed. You're impressed. <laughs> yeah. Now you know why you married me. I'm impressed. Right? Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now, we have our trusty little GoPro hooked up right over here. And uh, we're going to go over here now and we're going to start to uh, do soldering. And we'll switch over to the GoPro so you can see exactly how it works. Okay, let's have a look and see what we got here. So here's our wires that we're going to join together. I have this piece of plate put there just so I don't burn the rubber on the, the table. So we're going to snip off a little bit of this, approximately a half inch to five eight of an inch long, like that. That'll do. And the same thing here. So the big thing here for me is splicing. So what I usually do is I usually just take these and wind them tight and wind this one tight as well. And then I take them and I put them in a cross section like that almost equally and I take them and I turn them like that and like that. Now people have many ways of doing this. This just happens to be my way and of course old habits are hard to break and I've always found this to be a really reliable way of doing things so now we're just gonna start our soldering I gotta get my solder so we have the solder we're going to heat up the gun we're going to attempt to heat up the gun there you go. My tip is probably getting a little bit bad on this gun too, by the way, so. Now, we're going to just lay the tip on the solder, like that. Or lay the tip on the copper, like that. And then we're just going to melt the solder in place. I'll pick it up because the uh, heat could be dissipating through the metal. And that's basically what you do. And if you see any sharp edges there left from the solder, just give them a little rub over. And that's basically what you have. You let it cool down or blow on it. And then you can take your heat shrink. What size do you use? Well, I like to use a little bit bigger than you need. Especially if the knob is the, if you got a little bit of solder built up there in the knob, well, you can use a little bit bigger. Let's see, I can probably get away with smaller than that. Yeah, let's try the red. We'll put a bit of red on there, because red is kind of nice. We put it on there. There you go, it fits well. You don't want to be putting it on while the solder is still hot or the joint is still hot, because your heat shrink will start to, to shrink before you get it in place. So. There you go, you got yourself a real nice join. It's strong and of course it's waterproof. There's many different types of heat shrink you can use as well. This is just a basic type with no glue behind it. Uh, if you wanted to make it even more durable, you could easily put another coating of uh, heat shrink on top of that as well. Just to give you some idea of the difference and how much it shrinks. Well, there's quite a bit of difference in them too. One will go inside the other, but we're going to put it up here as well. And then we're going to see if it'll shrink up. shrank up really nice it's a nice joint it's got double the thickness now for protection so you don't have to worry about it going to ground it's a uh, or shorting out so it's a it's a nice connection I like to use a heat gun why do I like to use a heat gun because it makes a more uniform bend or nice uniform uh, heat on your heat shrink a lighter you could scorch it on one end and not heat it enough on the other and it's just a poor way of using uh, heat shrink as with a lighter. So get yourself a, a heat gun. Uh, 
Uh, this particular one I like. Uh, people say, well, why does it have the disc? The disc is basically for a stand. I could easily take it and put it up here and I could have it stand up on a different angle. So that's basically all that is. So we'll do one more, one more splice. And just to see what it's like again, we'll, uh, we'll go over it. I really like those. These are old blue point uh, strippers. I really like those. Had them for years and years and years. So you twist them like that. That's how I do it. Some people just lay them up against each other and do it that way. I personally like to do it this way. It's like double strength. It's like an insurance policy type of thing. And uh, you just wind them this way. Again, this is an exaggerated version here because I don't usually have my copper that that long. But just so you can see it easier. And see there's no strand sticking out. That in itself is almost strong enough. But, of course, we need to... Uh, we need to solder it, so I'm gonna to have to change the tip on this soldering gun soon. He's starting to he's starting to act up on me. You can almost feel it when they're starting to act up. They won't they won't buzz. So just another maintenance item that I need to look after. And again, you just lay it up against the copper and you touch your solder on there. And you're good to go. It's, uh, it's as simple as that. So Donnie, no excuses when you're doing your Massey. Now you'll know how to solder them. Okay, we'll put some heat shrink on again. I just use a simple little knife or scissors, whatever. And you can put it on. Again, wait till it cools down because if you don't, as soon as I slide that heat shrink on there, it's going to go and it'll shrink and it'll fool up on you. It's still hot, but I'm going to try to do it quick. There you go. That's quick. That's quick. And that, friends, is how you do basic soldering on wiring. I hope you enjoyed it. So, as you can see, there's not a big lot to it. You know how to splice them together now. You know how to solder them. Just basically lay your soldering gun or your soldering iron on the copper till the copper heats up. Feed your rosin core solder in to your gun. And when it starts to melt, you'll see it flow down over the copper and it's good. You basically just check it to see if there's any sharp edges or any copper protruding out. If there is, you just take your little nibblers, like I have here. They're actually uh, tie wire uh, cutters, or strap cutters. And I just use them for trimming the wire. Put my heat shrink tubing on. I use a heat gun and not a lighter. And you have that, that soldering joint, that solder joint now is as strong as the wire itself. And that basically, folks, is, is how you do a basic soldering job. You can't get much more basic than that. So until the next time, I hope you learned something. Until the next time, we'll see you. If something else basic comes up, we'll even show you that too. Sounds good. You guys take care, and we'll see you in the next video. God bless.